You don't uh, know, like some, you're saying that you don't sometimes know where it's going to go, but all of us have no idea where it's going to go. But do you often... I intend to keep it that way. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> Bugger. Um, I thought I was going to be the one to wheedle it out of him, guys. Um, do you sometimes look at the speculation on the internet and go, oh my God, how are they coming up with these theories? You know, I, I, I did once upon a time, a long, long time ago, but I've given up doing that. Um, <laughs> actually, the, the, the uh, internet ice and fire community, Game of Thrones community, uh, of course, has grown hugely over the years, mm -hmm. just like the series has. It actually began right here in Australia. The very first website ever devoted to the series was uh, started... Uh, by a guy named Peter Gibbs, who uh, was called Dragonstone, and it was based here in Australia. And it was the first bulletin board where people would post their theories and discuss them and talk about who was the favorite character or who would win in a sword fight or, you know, what secrets they thought I was uh, mm -hmm. hiding or not hiding. Um, and when that occurred, and, and now we're going back to, uh, I think, around 1998, 99, that this... Dragonstone started. Um, I did look at it. I was very flattered to have a website entirely con devoted to fans discussing not fantasy in general and not science fiction in general, but specifically the series that I was working on. And I read some of the discussions, but then it rapidly dawned on me, you know, I should not be doing this. Uh, oh, okay. For one thing, I, I don't want to actually post there, because the minute I post there... <laughs> the free discussion among fans who are all more or less equal ends and it becomes instead everybody gather around the author and ask him questions and that's a distortion of what the format yeah. should be. I didn't want to do that. And the other thing is, yeah, some of the theories were incredibly wrong-headed and amusing in that <laughs> sense. Some of them were clever and maybe I hadn't thought of them, but now I'm saying, you know, that would be a good idea. Have you done that? Uh, no, I don't want to do that either, because then, you know, then I'm like taking uh, ideas from, from the fan. I don't want to, I want this to be my own ideas. And then the other one was, of course, some, you know, I have certain things that I'm laying clues for that there'll be revelations later on. Some people had put together those clues, even as early as 1998, and are adding things together. I said, well, what do, what do I do with that? What do I do with that? The, yeah, these people have guessed the secret that I'm going to reveal in book six. People have already guessed that here, and book two is just out. You really have two choices there. You can ignore it and proceed with your plan, despite the fact that some people know where you're going. Or you can get all panicky and say, oh, my God, they figured it out. I can't let that be. I'll have to change it. I'll have to go in a different direction. And I, th I think some writers do that. And I think that's always mm. a mistake. Yeah. You know, if you've planned your book that the butler did it, and then you read an internet, someone has figured out that the butler did it, and you suddenly change in midstream, and it was the chambermaid who did it, mm. then you screw up the whole book because you get these, this foreshadowing early on, and you've got these little clues you planted. Now they're dead ends, and you have to introduce other clues, and you're retconning. It's a mess. So I decided as early as Dragon's, Dragonstone's heyday, and I think that site had gone away by 2000 or so, um, that I would stay off the fan sites and, and let, the fa let those be for the fans, let those be for the readers, let them argue their theories, whether they're right, whether they're wrong. But I don't need to know about that. One thing that people try to do on the internet is they watch the show and then based on what isn't included in the show, they assume that isn't important in the books. For example, um, Jane Westerling uh, survives, but uh, Talisa doesn't. Now, is that a fool's errand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, again, is it just people massively overthinking everything? People do overthink a, a number of aspects to this, you know. Mm. Oh, eye colour? <laughs> uh, yes, that and other things. People overthink my, my own comments here. I mean, we have, some of you will undoubtedly rush home and, and tweet or post on Facebook about this. Some of you are probably tweeting even now. And I will make some joke or some offhand comment. And, and uh, of course, when you're, it's being repeated in 
tweeting and all that, they, they, all of the context and the tone of voice is taken out of it, and suddenly it becomes like a papal pronouncement, and people <laughs> are going over it. Oh, he used this word instead of that word. That must mean this thing. And, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a little kind of scary, the freight that can, uh, that can be generated by uh, some of that. Yeah, but the, the show... Um, the show is the show, and the books are the books. Uh, Dave and Dan are doing a great job, and they're doing a very faithful thing, but they're, they're operating under constraints that I don't have. And uh, budget, running time, uh, you know, the practicalities of production. Um, so there are places where the two are going to diverge, and uh, they, they are going to diverge. I'm not going to... I'm not going to, once again, go back and make the chambermaid do it instead of mm. the butler did it because, because of something that David and Dan did in the show. And if, and if there are indeed, at the end, there are differences, well, so be it. There are in virtually every movie that was, uh, every, yeah. every movie adapted from a book, every television series adapted from a book, these differences exist. You never get a complete transliteration.